Welcome back everyone and it's time to go balls deep! In this video, I will aim to explain how powerful Satoru Gojo is and why he is the strongest sorcerer in Jujutsu Kaisen's entire history. For example, did you know Rain doesn't actually touch Gojo without his permission? No. Well, now you do. And to find out why this I'm is even possible, right now, then watch the entirety of this video as we bask in the glory of Satoru Gojo's power level. Satoru Gojo is a name that terrifies any one in the Jujutsu world, be it cursed spirits or Jujutsu sorcerers. From his introduction itself, we know that behind Gojo's laid-back attitude, he is actually an enemy not to be messed with. He is not just strong, he is the strongest Jujutsu sorcerer alive and the strongest Six Eyes user in history. Against his insane strength, even special grade curses and a 1000 year old shaman had to come up with a once in a lifetime chance just to trap him, let alone thinking of killing the dude. And Gojo's track record goes even further because he was the first and last person to sense Toji Fushigoro's presence and push many cursed users like Ogami and Awasaka into the shadows, who claims to win even against the strongest cursed spirit, even at full power with 20 fingers. Sukuna. The only way to understand this is to dive into Gojo's abilities and his impact in the Jujutsu world. It's rewind time. On December 7th, 1989, Satoru freaking Gojo was born and his birth alone altered the course of the Jujutsu world. Throughout Jujutsu Kaisen, Akotami has emphasized that balance is a major factor, but Gojo's presence drastically shifted the balance of power between sorcerers and cursed spirits. Suddenly, the Jujutsu sorcerers became too strong, only because of Gojo's birth. And you guys know I have a degree in anime bullshit science, but this is actually real science, I'm just saying, because we all know Newton's laws, right? And also that Akatami is a huge nerd. So, of course, there was an equal and opposite reaction to Gojo's birth. Ironically, also because of Gojo, cursed spirits started getting too powerful to somehow balance out Gojo's strength, on top of other reasons such as Sukuna's fingers resurfacing and modern society. Satoru Gojo himself said in episode 7 that there were quite a few special grade curses appearing recently, but maybe he didn't know that it was all because of him. Akatami mentioned in the fan book that Gojo terrifies people even more than Sukuna as a human. He even said that things were starting to mellow down after the golden age of curse techniques, but Satoru Gojo's existence was a bomb that charged everything up again. Even as a child, Gojo was protected and targeted equally because of his abilities. During the Shibuya incident, we come to know that a lot of contract killers were sent after Gojo, but they could not even get close to a small child. So essentially, Satoru Gojo has been above all others from his very childhood. He wasn't even known as the Satoru Gojo to others that he is now. He was just the six eyes because he had inherited the Gojo clan's deadly technique, Limitless, along with it. A clan that was so deadly that Kenjaku had to keep killing the clan's members that had inherited their technique. Otherwise, his plan to change the world would literally not be possible. If everything I've explained so far isn't enough, there are more examples that you can easily miss of how Gojo is like the god of Jujutsu Kaisen. Before I tell you why, here's an interesting little story. It is said that when Buddha Sakyamuni was born, he took seven steps from his mother and pointed to the sky and the earth to say that throughout the heavens and earth, I alone am the honored one. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yes. That's roughly what Gojo did back when he was a second year student. Jujutsu Kaisen is heavily based on Buddhism and in Akatami's eyes, Gojo is Buddha himself. In the hidden inventory arc, we can see that Gojo's clash with Toji was his awakening, but there's more to it than him just learning the reverse curse technique. Gojo found his true self at death's door and became the strongest sorcerer alive at that moment. He became the only person who is enlightened in the whole Jujutsu world, much like 
like Buddha himself. After his best friend's betrayal, he also decided to become a teacher to preach his ways. The resemblance is too uncanny to miss, and Akatami confirmed this as well. Seeing his image and abilities, I can even say that the special grade category is too small to confine Gojo because he is just miles above his peers even in that category. So just like Buddha, Gojo's birth was too significant and his abilities prove what the author said about him. Satoru Gojo is the ceiling of power in Jujutsu Kaisen's universe. There is literally nobody stronger than him. To best understand Akatami's statement regarding why Gojo is the ceiling of power, we need to talk about his abilities. It is more or less like guessing why Sukuna is interested in Megami. We know a lot about it, but we still don't know enough. Um, at least those that don't have the notification bell on for our channel and haven't watched these videos that cover it. Yes, we even have videos about that if you're interested in it. And this is kind of like a um, self plug, but I'm just saying. But what I'm trying to say is, essentially, Satoru Gojo has never used his abilities to their full potential or power ever in the manga. Because even a flick of his hand with the technique can lead to massive destruction. We saw how a single attack from Gojo has destroyed entire forests in his fight against Jogo and Hanami. Even 0.2 seconds in Gojo's domain expansion meant two months of rehabilitation for the civilians at the Shibuya incident. So it's no doubt that Gojo's abilities are on an entire different level. Gojo has two cursed techniques, the Six Eyes and Limitless. These combine to make him the strongest sorcerer alive. But before we go to the Six Eyes, we have to understand Limitless and its forms that Gojo uses. The first time we saw Gojo use his technique properly was in his fight with Jogo. And it bombarded us with like so many questions. How did Gojo stop Jogo from reaching him, let alone attacking him? Well, as Gojo explained, it's because there's an infinity that exists exists everywhere and Gojo can use it with his first ability limitless. So to understand how and where that infinity came from, we have to understand his ability. Basically speaking, Gojo uses his inherited technique to manipulate and distort space itself. Even if he looks like he's having a normal day, he is actually constantly using limitless. It's important to know that Gojo's technique only brings infinity to reality. He does not create space between himself and his opponents, but only divides the finite space into an infinite amount. This technique is heavily based on mathematical principles that you will find out about soon enough if you stick around. Limitless has three different forms that Gojo uses according to situations. So let's get into it. Neutral Limitless Infinity. At any given normal moment, Gojo is always using Limitless in its neutral form. You have seen it at multiple moments in the story when Gojo makes anything stop from hitting him, be it Jogo's attack or Utehime's irritated tea splash to his face. In the simplest of words, there is a definite space between you and Gojo that you cannot cross, no matter how hard you try, and it's called the infinity. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is like, uh, all you fangirls or fan guys wanting to meet Gojo and touch him or even kiss the dude, it will be by his permission only. No one can even come close to him. The closer you get to Gojo, the more his technique divides the finite space into smaller parts. If you remember grade school math, you will remember that no number ever becomes zero when divided. It only tends to go to zero. So just like that, there will always be a finite space around Gojo that is impossible to scale. This concept comes from limits and derivatives in mathematics. But Akadami also used the example of Achilles' paradox to make it even more clear. So that means it's time for another story just to explain Gojo's superior power in this show. That's how OP this dude is. Well essentially, the Greek philosopher Zeno came up with a fun tale about a race between a tortoise and Achilles himself. The tortoise challenged Achilles to a race but with the condition that the hero must give him a 10 meter head start. Well of course Achilles agreed, thinking he could cover up the distance in a flash. But what if I tell you he would not win the race at all? The tortoise 
wisely yeah, told boy. Achilles that in the time Achilles would cover the 10 meters head start, the tortoise would have moved a certain distance ahead, even if it was small. By the time Achilles would cover that small distance, another small distance would have been created between the tortoise and him. You can think of it as walking to a bus stand 100 meters away, but you can only move in halves of the remaining distance. You will first walk 50 meters, but then you can only walk 25 meters, then 12.5 meters, and so on. The distance will keep on getting smaller, but it will never be zero. This means you will never close the distance between you and the bus stand, which will reduce by a very small amount each time, making you extremely slow. This is exactly what Gojo's opponents feel when infinity exists. Gojo uses the neutral infinity to keep any attack or harmful substances away. He can filter objects by their shapes, composition, mass and speed to stop or allow them near him. It is such a flex that he neither needs an umbrella as seen in opening 2 of Jujutsu Kaisen, nor does he even walk on the ground just like the rest of us, because we saw him harmlessly walking over ants in the Kyoto Goodwill arc. Infinity can only be stopped when the user disarms it or high level curse techniques like domain amplification or expansion. A very few curse tools like the inverted spell of heaven can halt or mess with it too. Moving on to the second form of limitless is the strengthened limitless blue. From the neutral state, when Gojo fires up his technique with curse energy, it creates an attraction force around itself. Gojo brings negative spaces into reality to create a magnetic force that attracts everything towards it to fill up the empty space. When Gojo hit Juzo with blue, he almost exploded because his body was attracted to the point of attraction to fill it up. Anyway, even though this technique needs immense concentration with a huge amount of cursed energy that annoys Satoru Gojo too, it brings negative numbers into reality. One can think of it as an extremely high power vacuum cleaner that sucks up everything at an insane power. The power of magnetism depends on how much cursed energy Gojo is putting into the technique but he has to be careful to not get caught in the aftermath himself so he has to create a point of attraction at a safe distance. However, when this situation is tough to handle, Gojo can use the strongest form of this technique as well, although at a huge risk. In his fight against Toji Fushigoro, Gojo used curse technique lapse maximum curse energy output blue, and this was to destroy everything in his vision to avoid sneak attacks. As the name suggests, the destruction caused by maximum output is much higher than when Gojo used it on Juzo. And since we're already on the topic, we know that Toji was a juggernaut of his own kind as well. He was known as the Sorcerer Killer and had the power to kill the entire Zenin clan if he wanted to. I mean, he was the only sorcerer who even came close to killing the strongest sorcerer in the entire history of sorcery. Even after a forceful summer that he turned to his advantage in the Shibuya arc, Toji single-handedly thrashed Dogon. Mind you, Dogon was a cursed spirit that proved to be a nuisance to two grade 1 sorcerers, Nanami and Naobito. Even Maki was helping them in that fight. So for Gojo to have one-shotted Toji Fushigoro in a short span after Gojo almost died, he has to have an incredible amount of power. It proves Gojo is not just strong, but the strongest sorcerer. This moves us on to reverse limitless red or curse technique reversal red and it's roughly the opposite of blue but not entirely. Until now we know that jujutsu sorcerers use negative energy or curse energy to use their techniques but since this is Gojo he uses positive energy from the reverse curse technique to create a point that repels instead of attracting. Gojo used curse technique reversal red against Jogo to blast him into the forest, miles away from where he was standing a moment before it. Jogo couldn't do anything or even react to it. Gojo calls it the convergence and divergence of infinity that repels anything and everything in its way. Its attack power is twice that of blue, but the process is even more complicated as well because it involves positive curse energy. Gojo's fight with Jogo is a great way of scaling of how overpowered Gojo 
actually is. According to Kenjaku, Jogo was worth eight to nine fingers of Sukuna. And Gojo practically toyed with this dude. Gojo obliterated Jogo to the point that his head rolled. Well, literally. Props to Jogo for facing both the most dangerous characters in the series, but even a 15 fingers Sukuna was just having fun with him. But what is Sukuna's power like at 20 fingers? The Jujutsu world is scared of it, but trust Gojo to make a bold statement of how he will win even against Sukuna at full power. I'm now gonna pass the video on to Harrison as he will explain Gojo's other techniques and power scale him even further to how strong he actually is. Now that Adil has explained both red and blue, let me tell you guys about purple. When Gojo brings both blue and red together, he can use the hollow technique or colliding limitless purple. In theory, it should be impossible to fuse two opposite concepts like attraction and repulsion together. So this technique is also called an imaginary technique. The red and blue forms mix together to fire a huge amount of imaginary mass that travels at speeds higher than even light. So one cannot even think of dodging it in time if they're not already aware of it. But there is more to purple than just being fast. Gojo used it for the first time against Toji, and we came to know that even within the Gojo family, only a few people are aware of hollow purple. To use it, the user has to be fully aware of the red and blue forms of limitless that are incredibly tough to master on their own. It gives a huge advantage to Gojo because inherited techniques are usually out in the open, but since purple is so tough, opponents can't know about it from any any source. What's more that even if there are more sorcerers in the Jujutsu world who can use Limitless, only Gojo alone can use Hollow Purple. Now as we said, there are more sorcerers who have the cursed technique of Limitless in the Jujutsu world. So what is it that makes Gojo so special? The answer is his other ability, the Six Eyes. Gojo is the first sorcerer in over centuries, yeah you heard that right, more than just 100 to be born with both six eyes and limitless. It doesn't even stop there though because there can never be two sorcerers with six eyes at the same time in the Jujutsu world. And six eyes is what helps Gojo bring out the real potential of limitless and become such a fine man. Uh, uh, sorcerer. Damn, his eyes are sexy. Oh my God. Uh, what is the fuss all about, you may ask? Well, firstly, a sorcerer who has mastered six eyes will never run out of cursed energy because it helps them to see cursed energy in insane detail and use it very efficiently. The cursed energy used because of six eyes is extremely close to zero. The sorcerer can also process objects without seeing them based on mass, size, chemical composition, etc, etc. And on top of that, analyze anything to its most minute details. Going back to the first point, it is only because of six eyes that Gojo can run his neutral limitless endlessly. This technique is so powerful that it can fry Gojo's brain if he doesn't cover his eyes because of the endless flood of information from his surroundings. The only time Gojo uses his six eyes without any restrictions is when he needs to use complex curse techniques like Hollow Purple and Domain Expansion. The Six Eyes also provide another ability to Gojo, which is Reversed Cursed Technique. It allows a sorcerer to output reversed cursed energy, which is similar to positive energy. Using this technique, Gojo multiplies negative cursed energy to reverse its effects. However, Gojo does not do it manually, but because of his six eyes, he runs on autopilot ever since the hidden inventory arc. When Toji stabbed him with the inverted spear of heaven, Gojo focused all of his efforts into somehow using the reversed cursed technique. He did do it and healed himself, making him an invincible force. What happens is that the six eyes calculate a reverse curse technique that constantly heals his brain from using Limitless at all times. Even if Gojo can't heal others with it, his reversed curse technique makes sure that he and his brain are always fresh, and so he never runs out of cursed energy. Yes, that's right, Gojo literally has an infinite amount of cursed energy despite being a human. Now you understand just why exactly everybody calls Gojo the GOAT. Now how can I end this video without talking? 
talking about the most loved scene of Gojo. Let's be real, people. Gojo's domain expansion in episode 7 is quite literally a work of art. Infinite Void is one of the most fascinating domain expansions in Jujutsu Kaisen, and the way it works is just mind-blowing. <laughs> in some cases, uh, this is quite literally. <laughs> When someone is inside Gojo's infinite void, they can see an empty space that seems like the centre of the universe. In reality, they are inside the limitless, where actions and thoughts are repeated endlessly. They feel like they can't feel, see, or understand anything, or rather, they can feel, see and understand everything at the same time. They are bombarded with an infinite amount of information, pretty much everything. As Gojo says, when presented with everything, one can't do anything. The overload of information causes the opponent to die slowly. According to Akutami, a person inside Gojo's domain would feel like they see everything, but not really see it. They would be stuck understanding a single thing forever. So it's not like there is an infinite amount of information. It's just that his opponent is stuck with processing and repeating a single thought so many times over constantly that they can't understand anything else. You can think of it as how Gojo would see the world if he used his six eyes without a blindfold. Inside Gojo's domain, only he and the person he touches are saved from its effects. As we said earlier, Infinite Void is so deadly that when civilians in Shibuya were exposed to it for just 0.2 seconds, they had to spend two months in re rehabilitation to function normally again. The domain uses a huge amount of cursed energy and is very refined. In fact, it has so much cursed energy that it can very easily overpower and override other strong domains. Look no further than episode 7 when Gojo supposedly wanted to teach Yuji the application of domain expansions. Jogo is a special grade cursed spirit with an enormous amount of cursed energy and hence his domain expansion is certainly also very strong with no miss attacks. But Gojo easily summoned infinite void and with the kind of domain it is, it can probably even go up against malevolent shrine in a domain battle. Sukuna and Gojo are the two characters with the most cursed energy in the whole series. So that battle, boy would that be a thing to witness. Especially when we have learned that once trapped, any opponent inside infinite void is unable to even move. If Gojo gets the slightest advantage, it will be game over for Sukuna because cursed spirits like him aren't immune to thoughts either. Well aside from these abilities, Gojo also has a couple of other ones because, you know, he just has to be over the top. For one, he can teleport over short distances and even carry others. He teleported in both volumes 0 and 1, but according to Akutami, it can only be done under certain conditions. Gojo also has amazing battle sense and physical strength that is only improved by his insane speed. On top of that, Gojo is also very practical and knows that he has to sacrifice some things in battle to win in the end. Or all of this makes him an extremely powerful opponent. In fact, Gojo is one of the archetypes of strength in Jujutsu Kaisen. He might even be the pinnacle of power, but he is very similar to both Sukuna and Toji in different ways. All three of them are figures of the Jujutsu world that were feared to a huge extent because of their strength. They are also a reflection of what Gojo could have become if he did not choose to be the good guy back in the past. Even though we have not seen his full powers just yet, there is a chance that he is a bomb waiting to explode when he comes back into the story. While he was gone, a lot of damage has been done, and we know how he has suppressed his emotions behind that goofy attitude of his. After he's unsealed, he has to come to terms with the deaths of Nanami and Yaga, as well as the aftermath of saving Yuji from his fate. If Gojo goes berserk and uses his abilities to the fullest extent, it may just be lights out. Not just for the Jujutsu world, but also the human world. We've only seen three attacks from Gojo so far but there is a high chance that he has more up his sleeves. Gojo has never been seriously fighting until now and even the start of the Shibuya arc was him having fun whilst fighting. If he uses his domain expansion and some explosive attacks like Halo Purple that are beyond imagination and comprehension, he can single-handedly destroy all of it very easily. We can only wait for Gojo to use his fullest capabilities against a worthy opponent and hope he's on the same team as Itadori and the others at that time. But hey, do you want to know who else is ridiculously strong in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen? My guy Yuta, and we actually covered his entire tragic story in this video on your screen right here. So uh, make sure you click it out because it's really damn good and I think you're gonna love it. Now, bye bye.